There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. Listen to words of Professor Buitron. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo, Buitron Academy, 956-401-4868, savat.biz. Hey, good morning. I'm wishing everybody a great Monday. You know, I woke up earlier today and I was about to upload a video that we had edited for our Monday's questions and answers. And I was pondering on an issue that occurred, you know, safety. How professional are we? Are we that professional, especially when we're dealing with people in front of us, um, teaching martial arts, teaching people how to defend themselves? especially with Savant, you know, we've always taken care of uh, the safety issues with everything else. Why does that come to mind? Well, we had professionals on a movie set last week, and there was a tragedy. An actor, famous actor, uh, Baldwin, uh, picked up a, a prop gun, and basically he killed um, a director and somebody else. It was a tragedy. It was an accident. I doubt that it was intentional. I don't think it's that. I think it was just misplacement of uh, security protocols. And that's what happens within the martial arts. Just talk about that. How can those safety issues make a difference in the martial arts? Well, number one, folks come to the martial arts for many reasons. Number one, they're afraid. Some folks are afraid of being bullied. Some folks are being afraid of uh, not knowing how to fight. Some people, some women, have been have stalkers against them, have ex-boyfriends, people that want to do them harm. So they're going to try to find a way to take that fear away and get some self-assurance. And at the same time, learn some defensive tactics, learn some martial skills to learn how to fight. Bottom line. And what, ha what happens within uh, the martial arts when we say that, you know, um, when you go into a martial arts school, a lot of people do not know what they're getting into. They go into a savat school, they think it's kickboxing. They think it's French Taekwondo, French Karate, French Aikido. Oh, it's French Judo. No, it's not. It's just French kickboxing. No, it's not. There's a lot more to it than that. You know, folks want to go into the martial arts and all of a sudden say, you know what? I want to compete. Sure, the enthusiasm is there. The fighters are there. Coaches are there. Folks that deal with the martial arts are there. You know, they understand that the martial arts exist. They understand that uh, people want to learn. But let's take safety into it. Are our classes safe? Are the people around us being safe? Let me tell you what I mean by that. You bring in people from different um, social groups together. Sometimes it's hard to do that. You know, there's social prejudice out there that exists in this world. You get a guy that uh, thinks that he is already tough and he wants to hit everybody in the school. How are you going to deal with that? You know, by the time you know it, you have seven, eight students that are no longer training with you. Okay, when you could have just said, hey, ease down, lower your contact, put your foot down. As an instructor, you have to put your foot down and set an example for safety. You know, many folks say, you know, Savant, you do with, with a live blade. Yeah, you train with a live blade. A lot of martial arts train with live blades. But does that mean that I'm going to be teaching a class for people that do not anything about knife fighting? and give them a live knife. Or you know what, we're gonna do some combative testing uh, of tactical elements. Here's my 45, here's my nine millimeter. Let me take the clip out there. You see, it doesn't have any bullets. It takes certain amount of training and it takes a certain skill level and mental capacity to train folks in that, in that era or in that field, and also have people training in, in those classes as well. 
Not all classes are for everybody. Okay. That's why we have so many different avenues within the martial arts. Some martial arts are geared for fighting in the ring. You're going to put a person that has never thrown a punch or a kick or know what to move or how to move. And you're going to put them in with somebody that's already skilled and say, here's, put some gloves on, go kick them. You're going to get hurt. Yell, yeah, you have to use your heads when you're teaching. It's all about safety. You know, check things out. I'm going to take them to a competition. I'm going to take them to a kickboxing competition. And all of a sudden, you show up and there's no, uh, how can I say, there's not an association that's backing it up. It's just, there's no ring. There's no ring doctor. But then they want you to fight against somebody else without, without weight categories, men against women, interchangeable ages. People are going to get hurt. You as a coach, you as a trainer, you have the responsibility for the safety of the individuals that come to your school. Understand that. I do not care if you're training at a garage or a park or the YMCA or guess what? I'm teaching some people just a couple of techniques. The instant you start teaching people, you become a professional martial artist, martial art instructor and understand that. Now, most individuals that go to school, I would say 95% of them have never fought, have no idea what martial arts are. They do not understand a Korean side of it towards the Western sides of it, towards the Brazilian side. They see something on TV and they're going to mimic and they're going to try to use that lingo as their own, how can I say, what they're looking for, understand? So you basically have to guide them. There's so many martial arts out there that you really need to understand that if you do teach these individuals, you have to explain to them what it is and babysit them for a while before you can actually allow them to go forward and train hard. Remember safety, safety is a key number one. Safety would have uh, stopped that tragedy there. One, check check over the elements that you're always training with. Two, you know, you're going to school today and you have a school there and you have a lot of, you do a lot of stick fighting. Check the sticks. Make sure the sticks aren't broken. If you lend out gloves to people when, when they come in, make sure the gloves do not have any hands. That's another thing. You go to boxing, and boxing gyms and so forth. People should be using their own gear, their own boxing gear. I understand. Sometimes you see kids that do not have money, and you have to give them the boxing gear. Well, there's things to do. Make sure that everybody goes in there has their own equipment. All about safety. There are diseases, skin diseases, that can be passed on from one to another. It's all about not only safety, it's hygiene. You know, you as the individual, you as the coach, you as the professor, you as the dentist, teacher, whatever you call yourself, leading the class, it's your responsibility to make sure that everybody. So when we go back to our school and we see something, make a note of it. That's what we should be working on today. If you like this video, hit subscribe. There's some other videos out there that we've been putting out. Uh, next week, we'll have an excellent one for you on this. So next time, much peace.